everybody. I'm Chad Eckert. That's not Eric Martins, but this is the Fantasy Golf Pod. I'm flying solo this week, partially due to the fact that Eric is out of town celebrating Easter with his family, but partially because DraftKings doesn't even have a contest for the PGA Tour. Our league, the Fantasy Golf Pod League, which assembles every week throughout the season and pays out after each major, that league uses the Euro contest, the trophy, Hassan. So, because I need to know those names for my league, I've decided to do the research like I do for a normal week and provide those names and those reasons to you. Should we start at the top of the list? What's kind of fun is maybe I can share my computer this week. Since Eric Quagnus Martins is not with us. How do I do that? Oh, okay. Here is the names. Some of these names, I have no idea who they are. I've had to Google a lot of them. I've been looking at the world golf rankings and looking at their recent form as well as their course history. And I am intrigued. I am going to use the same principles that I use every week. And that is fade the top priced guy this week. It's used Luton who comes in at 11 five. I'm not going to use loose because he is too expensive, but I am going to go down to another name. Look at these, JJJ. Jordan Smith's pretty good, actually. Uh, young guy coming up in the world, but they, uh, the name I like is Jorge Campillo. That guy has been doing things lately. Look at his recent form. Jorge Campillo has had a third, a 20th, a second, and a second coming into this event, according to smartgolfbets.com. Uh, Jorge has a 46th and a 19th here. He's played here the last two years. 10-7, that's a decent price. Uh, You can also see in the 10K range, Nacho Elvera. Nacho has great recent form as well. A sixth, a second, and a second. He has a second at this event in 2016. Nacho, cool name. Somebody smart golf bets is also on. My favorite, though, is Andy Sullivan, an Englishman at 10-1. You get the savings. He's also coming in in pretty decent form, a T11 and a T7, and he was also T7 here last year. So if you apply those principles, recent form and course history, you land upon a little bit of the savings at 10-1 Andy Sullivan. But if you go into the 9K range, there's a few names that I'm interested in, including Eric Van Ruen. EVR, $9,500, somebody who went to the University of Minnesota, a golfer like myself. That's kind of fun. He also is solid, coming in with a T6, T15, I missed a cut, but a T2 and a T36 in his last five. And he was also T7 here in 2018. Eric Van Ruin at $9,500. Let's do it. Oh, more cool names. Some that I've had to Google and learn about. We don't normally play Euro events. But Fabrizio Zanatati. What? Awesome. From Paraguay. Guy's pretty good. Straight up the recent form. He's been crushing it. T7, T11, T2, and T24. Awesome name. Fabrizio. Brilliant. Uh, also, a cool, cool name. Look at this guy. I think it's Christian. Oh, God. Christian Bezudenhout. Bez- Bezudenhout. $9,000. Whatever. You'll see that weird name on the top of the leaderboard. And if you're going to watch starting Wednesday night, it will be overnight, most of the coverage. And Christian Bezudonhout should be up there because last year he was T22, and when he played in 2017, he was 34th. I've never heard of him personally, so I did have to do some Googling, and it turns out he comes in three top tens in his last four. I like it. 
Booze and Hoot. We're tooting the Booze and Hoot this week. Shall we go into the 8K range? One of my favorites. I always love to pepper the 8K range here at the Trophy Hassan. Starting at the top, a name, Paul Dunn. He is solid. I would consider him somebody that you should consider. Although, I do like some names like Bjork. That's popular. I like Lipsky. David Lipsky was a winner at the Alfred Dunhill in December. Um, he's a name that dabbles a little bit on the PGA Tour here and there, Mr. Lipsky. But the obscure name that comes in with some hot fire recent form is Masa, what is it? Masa Hiro Kawanama, Kawamura. No idea. Uh, but he is solid. Look at this. Second, 15th. Well, they withdrew for some reason. 20th and 56th. So I don't know where he was playing some of these events. I did look into and click into the leaderboard, and there are names. There are recognizable names. The ones that are in the 9 and the 10K ranges, they're in these tournaments. And Masashiro Kawamara finishes 2nd or 15th against those humans. Uh, you can see those things here. Anyway, I also like a guy at 8 1, Max. Kiefer, who, well, at 8,100 is a decent price. Uh, he missed the cut there at the Indian Hero Open, which is a little concerning with the 78 in the second round. But before that, he was a T5, a T14, and a T2. And he was also T22 at the Punta Cana about a couple weeks ago on the PGA Tour. So think about Kiefer and Kawamura in the 8K range. But you could also think about Bjork and Dunn. All right. Traveling down into the 7K range. Let me swig my beer. There are a lot of juicy names here. I mean, but this might be the range where you stop your clicks. Because I did venture into the 6K range, and I am a little worried about that one. Although... I always fade the top price guys, so I'm going to have the savings to be able to buy into this uh, lower 7K range and fill my lineup with those names. But if you do choose the highest price guys, you might have to go into the 6K range or sacrifice some of the depth on your team. And I, I don't feel like you need to do that here. I think you can just take care of some of those 9Ks. Fabrizio, Bezen Dudenhout. Eric Van Ruin, those three 9K names, click a few of those 8Ks that we talked about, and then you just pepper the 7K range. Let me just go through it. Paul Warning, somebody that was ninth and third here. Also, uh, Ben Hebert, Hebert, 7'9". Benjamin Hebert, oui, oui, bonjour, from Francais. Done well here. Done well recently, a 7 and an 18th. I mean, everyone's going to miss a cut here and there. We know that. Uh, that doesn't bug me. The best name in the 7K range, the one that I love the most, and this is like the Matt Kuchar of the PGA Tour, as far as I know, in how I've been following it passively. Um, Adrian. Oh, Diggy. Oh, I like him a lot. He is from Spain, someone that is uh, coming in, recent form of a 10th, a miscut in the 38th, so not – Terribly great, but not terribly bad. Somebody that has course history here, a 19th, a 56th, and a 22nd, $7,600. Vegas likes him too. His price to odds, he's one of the best in the 7K range. I like, oh, oops, uh, Ma Matthias Schwab. Stump the Schwab. This guy has recent form, and he's young, kind of fiery, looking to make some... Uh, some headway here on the Euro Tour, a cup maker, eight of his last nine. Josh Gary. Uh, I've never heard of him, but he's hot. Comes in ninth, seventh, second. That doesn't show it here, but you can see it on smartgolfbats.com. Also, two gloves, Aaron Ray. 
Ooh, he wears two gloves, and he is cool. He might not be as popular as everyone else, but he did one point win the Hong Kong Open in November, and that was against like RCB, Sergio, Fleetwood. He went up against uh, Matt Fitzpatrick and beat him at the end there in the Hong Kong Open. So I like two gloves, Ray. Aaron Ray, $7,500. I think I'm going to also pick Sinquin. Shinquin. This dude is scary, though. He was six cut, 10th. He's, like, he's a sporadic guy who can be hot fire and win it or lose it. His last four events include a T6, a withdraw, a miss cut, and a top 10. Scary. Uh, $7,200, Chris Paisley. He has uh, top 10 potential, so if you want to go down to the lower 7K range, you can pick Chris Paisley. This guy, he has uh, made some cuts recently. Likes golfing. At 7000 on the nose, this dude, Anton Carlson, with two S's. T9, T2 coming in, so that's good. I like that recent form. Um... Otherwise, yeah, I'll probably stop here on most of my lineup building. But if you go into the uh, the six thousand dollar range, there's a point where I'd pick up McIntyre. I like him. He's kind of fun. Okay, he's twenty one years old, and he definitely looks like he's twenty one. He's made seven of his last eight cuts. Motivated, wants to make his name. So he's been T twenty, T forty five, T thirty one, and T seventeen. Like it a lot. Sixty nine hundred. Uh, there's a name. Liam Johnston, 6,800. I've seen it before because my son's name is Liam, so uh, I just recognize it. That's maybe someone I'd pick. He did win something in September called the Kazakhstan Open. So Liam Johnston is a winner. 6,800. And it's hard to overlook the recent form of Hurley Long from Austria. It won't show up here, and he's got no picture. This dude's 24 years old, and he is a stud from the University of Texas Tech. Once shot a 61 on Pebble Beach as a senior, uh, which was a course record for college children. He has extreme hot fire recent form against the likes of you and me, obviously, but at least he's doing it still. Somewhere on some golf courses – where he plays competitively, his recent results are third, third, 11th, seventh, fourth, second, ninth. Whew! That's like Tiger esque in the early 2000s, my friends. Let me repeat that. Hurley Long at $6,600, the 795th player in the world, is winning, or not winning, performing against scrubs on random courses to the tune of third, third, 11th, seventh, fourth, second, ninth. Okay, and he's $6,600, so there's your flyer. You had enough of the names and the reasons? Should we talk about other things, like the Zurich Classic? Do you guys want to know about that? Should we talk about those things? I got Jason Day and Adam Scott as the favorites for this thing. So that means they're going to miss the cut. And also, why would you ever pick Adam Scott and Jason Day in anything that's not a major or important to them? They have a fingernail that hurts, they're gonna withdraw. Patrick Cantley and Patrick Reed are 12 to one favorites. They're the same as they were last year, I wrote down. Oh, Stenson, who was with Rose last year, is now with McDowell, which might actually be a come up with the way that McDowell has played lately. They're 20 to one. Louis and Charles are also a very competitive team and like to play, and they're 25 to 1. Blixt and Smith are friends and like to play this event too, and they're 40 to 1. Kokrak and Strout, 50 to 1. They're both playing very well lately, so that could be a flyer. 66 to 1 on Strewman and Vaughn Taylor. Damon and Harkins at 125 to 1. If you want the flyer of all flyers, you got Lebiota and Luck for 200. TPJ paired with Nate Lashley, that's 200 to 1. And then you got Putnam and Homa at 200 to 1. So there you go. Zurich. We talked about that. I will talk about now the season so far. 
The season, 2018 and 19, technically started on October 4th with Kevin Tway's win at the Safeway Open. Feels like forever ago. Oh. That was when Cam Champ was good. He won the Sanderson in the off fall start of the 2018-19 season, the same week that Xander won that WGC HSBC. So far, we've crowned 26 winners. There's about 20 or so events left. Uh, so far, the most top 10s of the season, Rory and Rom. They both have seven top 10s. Average score this year, JT. So far, 69.5. One, two. And DJ, 69.5. Six, four. So, I mean, they're pretty close. DJ, JT, going consistent. Strokes gained total so far this season, 2018-19. Rory has 63.04, and DJ has 59.98. Not surprising. DJ and Rory, top two in strokes gained total. Also, strokes gained T to green. Rory comes in as most strokes gained T to green per round. And Hideki is right behind him. Oh, the FedEx Cup. Everyone cares about that. That's where Kucher is your leader so far. Kucher's dominating. He may actually end up being the player of the year if he continues this way and picks himself up a major along the way. If you want to know player of the year so far, it could be Tiger, Rory. It's probably Tiger because of the Masters. But if you don't want to pick Tiger because you're an idiot, then you might pick Rory. He's got to win players. Had like a bunch of top fives. Kucher has got a couple wins. Played awesome second last week. Xander's got a couple wins on the season. Performed at the Masters. So he's in the running. Rom will pick himself up a win or two, and he could be in the running for player of the year. Story of the year. That's kind of fun. I wrote down Kucher not paying his caddy has been one of the best stories of the year, or paying his caddy $3,000 on a million-dollar win. Uh, Sergio going ape shit on the bunkers in Saudi Arabia and the green just being a crazy man. And then Kucher meeting up with Sergio at the match play and causing drama. Those two are idiots. Kepka losing weight for no reason. And then showing his butt on Instagram. What the hell are you doing? Oh, my favorite part of the whole year so far is the farmer's insurance open where I won the quarter arcade GPP cashed $400 off of 25 cents. That was glorious. Yeah, that's about it. I gotta, I gotta say it's kind of done without Eric. Hope you were entertained. Send it off with the guitar. Bye-bye, everyone.